Hello and welcome to this demo video. Before we get started, I'd just like to explain to you a few things uh, which will relate to all of the basic range spreadsheets. Um, number one, there is a key on the intro and setup tab of all of the spreadsheets showing what the different color headers mean. The blue headers mean that uh, the cell's formulated, so it's locked and you can't change it. The yellow headers are where you can input data and occasionally there might be some gray headers, which is just a different kind of data input, but uh, we'll include instructions as and when that happens. Um, the other thing that you can be aware of is there are ways in which you can damage the spreadsheet. So please do take a look at the link where you see this image, which will take you to a web page to show you how to better preserve your spreadsheet. Um, please feel free to keep a blank version of the spreadsheet somewhere so that if you do mess up uh, a spreadsheet that, you've, um, that you're using, you can in fact just open a new one, a blank one. And some of the spreadsheets only last for a year and then you've got a blank one to start the following year. So do keep a blank copy as a backup somewhere. And uh, lastly, wherever you see this image, you can click on it. It'll take you back to the store where you purchased this product um, to see if you've got anything, um, any more products. Uh, one last thing, to see a demo video, you can click on this uh, on a link that looks like this in order to go to the demo video, but that'll take you to the most recent demo. If in fact we've done upgrades and you're using an older version and you'd like to see the demo relating to your version, then do click on the uh, watch on YouTube link, which will take you to that specific video on YouTube. So I think that's all you need to know. So without further ado, let's move on to this demo video. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the demo video for the LinkedIn post report. Um, this is a very, very simple spreadsheet where you get to capture the data from your LinkedIn posts. Uh, I'll show you what data you require and that then produces a very comprehensive report to show you best time, best kind of post, that kind of thing. But I'll show you exactly how it works. Before I start, I do want to say this is only for serious LinkedIn users. The reason why I say that is because you cannot export this data from LinkedIn at the moment. Hopefully they will change it. If they do, I will update the spreadsheet to accommodate that. But at the moment, you can't get the, the, the data from, X, uh, from um, LinkedIn. So you have to input it manually. Now, when I say you can't get it from LinkedIn, you do obviously get it from LinkedIn, but you can't export it and just paste it into the spreadsheet. You're going to have to go through your posts and post this, uh, capture this information manually so that's why it's only for serious linkedin users if you're not going to input that data if you if you uh, don't want to input the data or not going to then it's pointless even looking at the spreadsheet but let me show you how it works um first and foremost select the starting month and the starting year the spreadsheet will last you for a year for 12 months so if you select the starting month and year, you may well want to do it per calendar year. You might want to do it for, per, for a financial year. That's up to you. And just keep a, a blue a blank copy of the spreadsheet so that you can then go and um, use another one the following year. You don't have to rebuy it again or anything. Just keep a blank copy. Just use it for a 12 month period. Then you've got up to 10 posts. Oh yeah, just before we go on to that, if you put dates in here and, and you don't see a starting date, then you've done something wrong here. You make sure that you enter those dates. This one you just select, and then this one you uh, put in the year uh, as it as it shows. Uh, let's just quit that so it doesn't make a noise. So yeah, once you put the date in, you'll see, you should see the date there, and then you can move on to post types. Post types, I really don't care what you put in here. This is up to you. What I would say is list up to 10 categories that you could categorize your post. So you might want to post a strictly business one. You may want to post a link to a blog post. You might want to post a funny one or a more personal one or a question or whatever. How you categorize those posts up to you, but you can select up to 10 categories for posts. Don't select any duplicates. Don't put input any duplicates. If you want to sort this column, you can simply highlight that, uh, go to data and click A to Z and you can sort that, that's fine. One last thing, bank holidays, because this checks when the bank holidays are, you need to put the bank holidays in to the spreadsheet. Um, the, well, the bank holidays are already in the spreadsheet. What you need to do is you need to actually come in and change them if there are any bank holidays which have changed so for example this year the 5th of may i think it was uh no 4th of may 
4th of May bank holiday. So what it's doing is it's checking the original bank holiday. That gives a text that says, yes, the 4th of May was a bank holiday, but this year it changed to the 8th of May because of uh, VE Day. So when I change that to the 8th of May, what that's saying now is it's changed the 4th of May to the 8th of May. That's all great. You don't have to add in all the other bank holidays. You only have to put them in if one of the bank holidays changed. If it doesn't change, then the spreadsheet will work it out. So that's where you put in if there are any changes to bank holidays. If they're not within this annual period that you've set here, then you, you can ignore that section. Then we move on to the post data. This is what you need to get per post. So what I would suggest you is I've broken down the data into the red, yellow, and the green. The red you need to enter as you post the data because you can't go back on LinkedIn and find this particular data. You can find that but you can't find that. So let me show you what I mean. If you go to your LinkedIn profile, which I've done here, and you scroll down to where it's, it says activity, if you say see all, and then you go to posts, this shows you the posts that you've posted on LinkedIn. So if you go down and scroll down to post, you can see it says 22 hours ago. It doesn't actually give you the time that you posted that post. It just tells you how many hours ago. So it's best that you actually capture the date and the time as you post the post. I would suggest capturing the first line of the post. You can either post, just capture the first line of text that fits within that cell for the post, or what you could do also do is you could write a brief description. So for argument's sake here, a graph about COVID-19, I could maybe type in here a graph about COVID-19 or something, just so you know what post that is that, that you've, that you've uh, entered so when you go back again to update it you can in fact uh, recognize it the reason why I've said use the start of the post is when you're scrolling down you can see the first bit of text I would just go and copy that text and put that into there so I can recognize what post it is is talking about uh, but obviously if you start your post with the same sentence every time then I would put something else down to differentiate between the posts the next thing all you need to do is select what type was it what type of post was it? And this goes down to the type of post that you've put here. Did it have media? So did it have an image or a video? If not, leave it blank. If it had an image, select image. If it had a video, select video. And then a link. This I've put this in here because I see a lot of people commenting about do links in posts stop your reach, that kind of thing. So you can either put there was a link in the post or there was a link in the comments. A link in the comments I don't think makes any difference really, but I've just put it in for for um, sake of having it there. So you can select link, no link in post in comments. That will stay the same. It's always going to be posted on that day. It's always going to be posted at that time. Those are always going to be the same. So once you've entered that, at least enter that, and I would imagine this line here when you first post. This you can come back and put in afterwards if you want to, but I just suggest doing all of this as you post your each comment because that will always stay the same. What won't stay the same is this. Now, if you've come onto this video to see which of my posts have been more successful at what time, you're going to be sadly disappointed because all of this is just, it's literally random. I haven't typed in any of this. I've just done formulas to randomize it. I've got in data all the way down for 2,500 lines and it's all just completely random. But what you would do is you put in the views, the reaction and the comments. Now you need to go and update previous posts fairly regularly because if you come back here and you scroll down to the bottom of your post, you can see that there shows the number of uh, reactions. That shows how many comments. And if you... You can see views of posts in the newsfeed. I don't know why it's not showing views up here, but here it's showing views in your newsfeed, views of your video, views of the post in the feed, etc., etc. This one might just need a bit more time, I think. I don't know. But nonetheless, what you do is there are the views, those are the number of uh, reactions, and those are the, there's the number of comments. So what you would do is now go and update that in those columns. Now, as you and I both know, this isn't going to stay the same. You're going to go onto LinkedIn the next day and you're going to go through your posts again and you're going to have to update these again. So the big question to you is how far back do you go? That's totally up to you. Once you've given up on a post and you go, well, that's fine. I don't really mind about it. The more disciplined you are and the more detail you want to go into, scroll back as far as you, as you want to and update those figures 
whenever, however regularly you, you see the need to do so. But obviously these will all need to be kept up to date and that's what's going to become quite a, a process of discipline to be able to go back and do that. And that's why I said at the beginning that this is only for serious LinkedIn users, it's not a quick fix. But if this is all up to date, as you update this, it'll use this data. So if I come here and update this, it'll automatically update the report accordingly. But that is all you need to fill in. That's it. Um, once you've done that, this entire report page, which we're going to have a look at now, is completely automated. So what does the report show you? It shows you the average post per month. Here you can see um, the based on uh, per month. If you have a look at the bottom here, you can see the views. So the light blue section at the back there shows the number of views you've had per month on average per post. So in January, February, March, April, reactions on average per post and then the comments on average per post. So if you post 50 comments in June and five in July, you're not gonna see it 50 times in June and five, it's gonna give you the average. So you can see if there were any particular months where you ran campaigns, that kind of thing, that had a, a better response than others. Next, that's your average post. That's just for one post. It's just turned on its side, but that's your average post for, for one post during the 12-month period. Here you've got your average post per day. So all these graphs are showing the same data, but this one is per day of the week. So you've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or bank holidays. So you can see if any particular day has brought you more success it's the same graph here, but this is per hour, so that's uh, midnight to one minute before one o'clock, that's one o'clock to one minute before two, that's two o'clock to two minutes, one minute before three, and so on and so forth. Here you can see each hour of the day, so you can see if there's any particular time of posting that brings you more or less success. Same graph again, but this time it's broken down per category, so however you've categorized your post, and then you've got the same ones here. This one is with media and that one is with the uh, link. So all these graphs show the same data, but it's just broken down depending on time or type or media or day, etc., or month. Then we've got a, a set of tables of data. Now this is really your time again compared to the type. So for argument's sake, if we look at this and took this as it is, we look for the dark green ones, we go here's the one of the darkest green ones that looks like the biggest value. So actually 12 o'clock posting about new products is the best time to post about that. So this shows a relationship between the time of the day and the type of product. And this show, this, the first table shows your views per post. So it's not total views, but per post. If you scroll down, you see the same table, but this time it's for uh, reactions per post and if you scroll down you see the same thing again now you've got comments per post so you can see what's the best time during the day to post for comments or reactions or views very often they'll be linked because as you know the more comments and reactions you get the more eyes on material that kind of thing um, this is the number of posts that you've posted so you can see where you are posting a lot of your posts and then you can come back to these tables and go if I'm posting the majority of my posts, uh, branding posts at 11 o'clock, what's it actually saying at 11 o'clock? That's quite low. Maybe I should start posting more at different times. So that's what these tables will do. You've got the exact same tables below, but instead, this time, instead of doing the relationship between time, it's now got the relationship between the different types and the day. Exactly the same tables. So you can scroll through and have a look at those again see where where you've got the dark green on one and does it tally up with the other ones and then the last thing you've got is back to graphs again the same as the other one but this one's slightly different the background instead of showing views that's actually showing how many posts you've posted based on each of the different categories the yellow one is showing how many reaction uh, reactions you've got per post and then the blue is showing how many comments per post so what you what this might will, will show you is um, for example, if the yellow and the blue column in funny is very high, but you've posted fewer posts, does that maybe mean you should be posting more of those posts? Or vice versa, if you're posting a lot of those, but you're having very small, uh, low interaction, maybe that means that you should be posting as many of them. But that's obviously for you to decide. I'm not a marketing expert. I'm not here to tell you what works and what doesn't work. I'm just giving you the tool to be able to see 
uh, what is happening in your, your, your profile so you can decide how best to manage that. So that's the report entirely automated based on this data. The red and yellow you can put in at the beginning when you post your posts. The green you need to be updating regularly to keep those figures up to date. And once you've set it up, I hope that that's all self-explanatory. Um, if this is for you and you are prepared to put the work in to be able to get this with the right data, to get this information out, and this will help you, then really get your hands on the spreadsheet. And I wish you all the best with your LinkedIn marketing. Thank you very much and goodbye.